Hello, uh, my name is uh, Xavier Pouya. Uh, I think we, we can start uh, the session now. Um, I'm Senior Pro Program Manager in the Azure Media Services product team. Uh, uh, based in, uh, I'm based in Paris, but the team, uh, the product team is based in the US, in Redmond. Uh, and the goal of this session is to present to you uh, Azure Media Services, which is a, a cloud solution to uh, uh, build complete media workflow in the cloud in Windows, Windows Azure. Um, so let's start. Um, so I'm planning to talk about, as an introduction, to talk about the media industry, um, what has been the history of the media industry in terms of uh, streaming and using uh, IP technologies. Then um, we will look in details about uh, into Azure Media Services, which, which is a platform as a service product for Microsoft. I will, uh, um, I will talk about a video on demand service workflow I will uh, demonstrate the, the portal uh, where you can set up uh, such workflow and you can set up Azure Media Services. Uh, we will talk also about a new feature we just added a few months ago, which is the dynamic packaging. And I will uh, demonstrate, uh, this time I will demonstrate through a .NET SDK application, the use of Azure Media Services and the use of dynamic packaging and we will conclude the presentation. So bef bef before uh, going into uh, the history of the media uh, for streaming, uh, who knows Azure in the, uh, in the assistance? Uh, can you raise your hand if you know Azure? Okay, so 70%, 80% of people. And who knows Azure Media Services? Oh, okay, so half, half of the audience, great. Um, so we will cover um, uh, some details for you to, to, to understand perhaps the new feature we just added recently to the, to the platform. Okay, so um, online video. I mean, we could say that it has been started in uh, 1999. Uh, one of the first uh, online events with the video was uh, a US event, uh, Victoria's Secret Fashion Show. That's interesting because they were using 30K uh, stream, right? This is not, I mean, we used, I think, the double just for the audio today, I would say. So they were, used, they were, they were streaming video and audio at uh, 28 kilobit per second. Uh, but it was one of the first, history, I would say, in historic event. Uh, and after we, another important event in the US was the debate between uh, Bush and, and Kerry uh, in 2004. 2000, after 2004, Netflix launched their service in US and uh, they delivered uh, adapt, I mean, nice and protected videos over the internet. Uh, a big and, and large event for Microsoft was the uh, Beijing uh, Olympics Games in 2008. Uh, we were using Windows Media Streaming. We were using Silverlight. Uh, and it has been used uh, for live streaming with more than 2,000 hours of event. And also VOD, because one of the advantages of the, of the, of the project was to deliver the live event after in, as, as a VOD uh, content. And so we estimate that more than 150 million of people were watching uh, the, the live stream and a lot of demand also for the on-demand version. Uh, Hulu in US, Xbox Live in 2008 and after. Um, and in parallel, I mean, we see the consumption of the, of the bandwidth on the internet really increased. Uh, and it's going to be more and more, uh, uh, the, the ratio is going to be more and more for the video on the internet in terms of uh, bandwidth. In Europe, uh, a lot of project has been done um, around 2000, 2008 and 2009. So I can um, reference the uh, BSkyB uh, application on the internet. You could watch uh, uh, on Silverlight, you could watch streaming. The same in Italy with Rai, uh, France Televisions in France with Roland Garros in 2009, which was one of the first uh, live events using smooth streaming. Uh, 
uh, and Canal Plus and a lot of other broadcasters using this technology to provide their content. In the US, uh, we, uh, we saw the launch of the services from Time Warner and Comcast also uh, around 2009. Uh, Another event for us was the Olympics Games in 2012, so last summer. Uh, it was the first event to use Azure and to use the cloud to stream the content. So um, it was developed by our partner, Delta Tree, and they were using Azure to stream up to 3,000 hours of live coverage. Uh, and of course, all the, all the live content was available as an highlight just after the broadcast of the, of the event, and also as VOD archives. Um, so first event in the cloud, and it was a very good test for us to test the, the Azure infrastructure for this kind of, uh, of usage. So the bandwidth is going to be more and more important, and Cisco, for example, expect that 80% of the bandwidth on the internet will be used by video content. Uh, so that's a very important use of, of, of the bitrate uh, today and, and in the future. So it's, uh, uh, it's nice to be able to stream uh, content, live content, on-demand content on the internet. Of course, it raises some challenges. Um, the goal is to deliver, the goal of Microsoft is to provide technology to deliver uh, high-quality video to any device from anywhere and at any time. Um, and so the challenge today are that you need to manage multiple formats uh, and multiple bitrate. A phone will not support the same codec or the same bitrate than a TV um, and not the same format. So today, if you want to cover, I would say, 90% uh, 90, 90 of the market, you need to uh, output smooth streaming, you need to output Apple HLS, uh, you need to output, output Flash. So the goal is to be able to answer to this need and to provide this format from, from the cloud. Uh, the, the other challenge are about the infrastructure. Um, this, is of, this is OTT technology, so if you have uh, 100 users connected to your server <coughs> and you double the number of users, you need to double your infrastructure or you need to add caches, right? So the more you have success, the more you need to pay for the infrastructure and for the, and for the CDN. Um, another issue is how to monetize the content because most of, most of the content of the internet is free. Uh, so that's really a big challenge. How I can monetize my content, manage advertising, and, and make some revenue uh, from this streaming. Uh, uh, premium content need a very good security, very good protection, and so there is, of course, a need for some projects to deploy uh, digital right management. And last point, uh, last important point is about the security. Uh, you need to provide um, some way to authenticate the user if this is a premium uh, uh, um, offer or if this is a a project for an enterprise, you need to authenticate and to make sure that your content is not going away uh, on, on the, on publicly. So that's for uh, this introduction. Now let's look at uh, Windows Azure Media Services. So uh, we develop uh, Azure Media Services on top of Windows Azure. So Windows Azure is the, uh, is the public cloud from Microsoft and basically it proposes Fabric, it proposed storage, computing, and database. So we used Windows Azure and these core components to store the content and to compute the video, of video file. But we developed um, additional API to, uh, that are really focused on media to build your workflow. So you are going to choose which component you want to use. So for example, we have a component to do the ingest. You can upload your content uh, to the cloud with this component. We have a, uh, an encoder, so you could compress your uncompressed video file, for example, and, and create an H.264 version. We have some static or dynamic packager. Uh, it means that we can, we can transform a smooth streaming asset to an HLS uh, asset. 
uh, we can also protect the content. We, we have a pre-ready packager online, so you could add a DRM protection to a smooth streaming asset, for example, from the cloud. And last piece that is available for VOD is a non-demand streaming server. So you could stream directly from, from the cloud. Uh, in, in green are the boxes that has been shipped in January. So we, sh we have shipped the product in January 2013. Uh, on the right side, on the black boxes are the one we are working on and we plan to release uh, the live features later this year. So we will support live ingest, so live streaming coming from an encoder on site. We will uh, archive the content. We will uh, re-encode the content in the cloud. Uh, we will be able to insert advertising and we will stream the content, the live content from the cloud. Um, the yellow box are really important for Microsoft and for our partners. Uh, we decided to make SDK available for partners who want to extend the platform. Uh, so let's take an example. Uh, you could have third party encoder manufacturers that uh, port the encoder to, the, to Azure Media. And then this encoder will be available as a component in Azure Media Services. So it's a way for Microsoft to extend the features and it's a way for our partners to uh, make business in the cloud and port what they, they, they IP, port what they, ha they have today uh, as a separate software, for example, to port that in the cloud and make, that, make them available to any Azure customers. All these features are available through API so that you can use any language if you want. This is, um, this is REST API. And we provide SDK also. I will show you that later. Uh, if you are using the API to develop a full workflow, we will be what we call a build-on partners, which means you are a user of the API. Uh, a a build-on partners are typically um, OVPs, so online video platform uh, companies, people who are really building a SaaS solution uh, for uh, managing the videos. Uh, that could be a, broad, a customer like a broadcasters or um, a telecom operators. So that's, um, that's how the partner are going to use the API mostly uh, to build the, the, the solutions. For large projects, you need to cache the content if you expect a lot of users. Uh, so Azure has a CDN, which is called uh, Azure CDN, CDN for Content Delivery Network. So this, this uh, infrastructure will cache the content. So in fact, the more you have users, the more the, the content will be cached in the CDN and uh, the, um, the, the origin server in the cloud will be, we have less load because of this caching. Uh, we are also working with partner CDN like Akamai or Level 3 or Lamlight. Uh, they can connect the CDN to Azure Media Services. There is no issue on that. And last, we, uh, because we want to deliver the content to many devices, we try to help the developers and we, we are providing some library and some source code uh, to a various set of, uh, of players. So for example, we, for Windows 8, we have a client library, so you, don't, you can un integrate this library in your, play, in your application. We provide some player framework source code for iOS. Uh, we provide some library for Windows Phone and for um, for Flash, and we have a porting kit, so you can also uh, have manufacturers of TV implemented the, for example, smooth streaming from a porting kit coming from, from Microsoft. So this, this partner's model is important because it extends the, the, the features. Uh, so let's look at the landscape we have, for example, today. Uh, on the uh, upload, so on the ingest, you can use HTTP or HTTPS, um, uh, which is supported by Azure. You can also use Aspera. Aspera has a nice UDP client. Uh, you could use to upload at very high bitrate your content. So you could expect to have to upload at 400 megabit per second or more your content to the cloud. 
Um, it's user DP, which means that you have a better management of, uh, fa of failure and you have a recovery of the, of the upload, upload process, which is really important for large files like a video file. On the, uh, for the encoding, uh, we are working with partners like Digital Rapids, uh, ATEM, Dolby. Uh, they are porting the encoders to the, to the cloud. And, uh, later this year, you will be able to uh, call an encoder from, uh, from a third party and use it from the cloud without having to install any software. Um, we have some other partners, so I will not browse all the partners, but an important partner, for example, on content protection with EasyDRM that can provide um, uh, packaging and provide license delivery of DRM licenses. Uh, we are also working with the main CDN providers, as I was telling you, uh, Akamai, Level 3, Lamlight, and we are extending the partnership. So the, the advantage for you will be that, okay, you can start today with some, with first party technology from Microsoft, and then later you could add some feature advertising, for example, insertion coming from the partner. Uh, so you could uh, grow your service and test very easily without having to directly, you know, get the technology from this company. So I'm going to show you uh, the, the portal in Azure. And, and we are going to, to do some um, upload of the, of the file and some encoding too. Okay, so let's switch to my... Computer. Okay, so this is the uh, Windows Azure portal. I think you. Let me know if you have some issue to read the, the screen. Uh, and so in the Azure portal, you will find the media services uh, tab here. And I have four accounts, four Azure media services accounts. So to create an account, that's pretty easy. You, you go to new, um, you select media services, quick create, and you give a name like uh, TechEd Europe 2. Uh, you select your data center. So uh, we are running Azure Media Services in six different data center, two in US, two in Europe, and two in Asia. Uh, so here, for example, I select uh, Dublin data center. And then you can select or create a storage account. So the storage account will be, uh, um, it's using the blob storage of Azure. And all your assets, all your video assets will go in this container and will be created in this container. And so I can create the, the, the media services here. Um, it takes a few, a few minutes. So I already create, created one. So here it is, take, take it EU. EU. Um, and you see that we provide um, directly some source code in C-Sharp or Java to help you to create your first application using Azure Media Services. Uh, we also provide the keys. So this, these are the keys to access your account. So I have the name of my account and the, one of the key I can use from the application to access to the API and to the content. I have also a dashboard uh, which shows the activity of the account in the last six hours or in the last, in the last seven days. Uh, so you will see here, for example, um, the encoder data in, the encoder data out, the number of jobs, the number of uh, failed tasks, and so on. Uh, so you could, you could have a view of the activity of this, uh, of, uh, this account. We have a, a scale uh, tab. Uh, this is an important aspect we will talk later. Basically, you can reserve streaming server and reserve encoders. So we will talk later about that. Content tab, that's a view of my assets. So each asset, an asset is a set of video files, right? So you could have uh, typically one AVI or one MP4 files for your video. But a, vid, a content could be a set of files, like 
uh, one video, one file for the video, but three audio, three audio files plus two subtitles, XML files. So for, her, for Azure Media Services, an asset is a, set, it's a collection of files. And you see here two, that I have two assets in the cloud already uh, uploaded and encoded, but I'm going to create a new one with you. So let's uh, press the upload button. Uh, and then I can uh, decide to um, upload from another blob storage in Azure. So I can access my blob storage here and select a file. Or I can decide to upload from my local hard disk, right? So let's go to my local hard disk. Um, I, took, um, I took a video uh, yesterday with my Windows Phone 8 device. So this, this one, it's a standard MPEG4 file. So I'm going to upload this file in the cloud and encode it to um, HLS and Smooth Jimmy. So the, the, upload, the upload process started and I should be able to see in a few minutes the, the file in the cloud. So let's refresh the content. Okay, so you see my uh, file is, my new file is here. It's an MPEG4 file. It is not published, which means that nobody can access to it. Uh, and now I can select the encode button and look at the, the profile that we provide. So we have three common profile. Uh, we have uh, playback for PC uh, with flash and silverlight. We have playback for uh, HTML5 play, playback for iOS. And we have also a lot of advanced profile like um, multiple bit, MPEG4 bitrate files or smooth streaming uh, assets. So I will select, um, let's select playback on PC and Mac with uh, Silverlight, for example, or we'll select both. So here the, the encoder is going to encode to MPEG4 uh, to create a smooth streaming asset and to convert the smooth streaming asset to HLS. Okay, so now I just started a new job, which is an encoding job. And if I go to this uh, jobs tab, I will see all the past job and the current one. So my encoding job is not there yet. Let's refresh the tab. Yes, here it is. So you see, I have a new job running right now in the cloud. And the job is a set of tasks. So I have two tasks in my job. First, first task is the encoding task. Uh, so really compressing the data, compressing the video data to uh, MPEG-4 and to smooth streaming. And this one is a conversion task it will create the HLS version of the, of the asset. So I can see the progress of the job here, and we are going to go back later and see uh, the, assets, the asset that has been created in a few minutes. So let's look at, at the typical video on demand workflow. That's, that's, a, very, that's a simple uh, view. In fact, you could do very advanced things, but let's start with a simple example. So typically, you, you, could, uh, you will start by ingesting your content in the, in the cloud. You will encode, uh, you will package it, you could encrypt it, and you, you will deliver it to your devices. So the first, the first step, uh, the ingest step, uh, it's a, I will say, a copy from your local disk or from another blob storage to, to Azure blob storage. Uh, there is several options. So you could uh, pre-encrypt the content. So we provide in the, Azure, uh, in the Azure SDK, Azure Media SDK, we provide a way to encrypt your content locally on your disk with AS256 and upload the content which is encrypted and it will stay encrypted in the blob storage. So we added an extra protection. It was required by a studio that wants to protect the assets from the beginning when they use the cloud. Uh, you could use secure HTTPS uh, upload. 
uh, we could also optimize with you the network peering between your network and the Azure Data Center network. For big project, we need to make sure that we have the, the bitrate to upload a, cat, a full catalog, for example, of video. Aspera is providing an, a nice option to do fast upload over UDP, uh, and that's for upload. Ne then, uh, once you have your content in the blob, you could manipulate it with Azure. Uh, you could encode it, and it will generate another asset in the same, con in the same blob, which is the output of the job, basically. If you have three different assets to encode, by default, you will have a queue, and the second asset will be encoding when the first has been encoded. So you will wait, you have to wait uh, for each encode to happen. That's the default behavior. If you want to be able to do multiple encoding at the same time, that's possible. You need to use the reserve unit option in Azure Media Services and reserve capacity. So you will select, for example, I want three encoders now, uh, and then you will be able to encode three different assets at the same time. The three jobs will, of course, create three different assets, new assets in the blob storage. That's possible with Azure Media Encoder, which supports um, encoding to H.264 or VC1. That's the two main codecs we support as an output. Uh, for the audio, we, are, we support also AAC, low complexity, HE, AAC, Dolby Digital Plus, and Windows Media Audio. Then we can package the, uh, the content to smooth streaming to HLS. And now we support MPEG Dash since, uh, I think, two weeks. So you could, uh, we, we release a preview of version of MPEG Dash. You could package to MPEG Dash. I will, sh I will show you la that later. You could encrypt the content with PlayReady. So PlayReady will be useful to protect a smooth streaming asset. Common encryption is the format we support for Dash. Uh, it is used by uh, DEC Ultraviolet to encrypt one time your asset and deliver the content, the, the DRM system with uh, several DRM systems. So we, su we support that for Dash. And you could also encrypt with AES. That's the kind of protection we support for HLS, for example. And later, we will, we will have third party also uh, coming with the encoder, coming with some uh, extra features uh, because they could implement what they have today in the encoder. They can port that in our cloud. So you will see more features coming from third party. Uh, we have a partner SDK for this uh, to create what we call a building uh, encoder or building component. Third step, uh, deliver the content. Um, so it's really transparent. It's really use, very, very easy to use. We are providing uh, an origin service, what we call an origin service. And still here, we have, you have two options. You can use a share pool, or you can use dedicated origin server. Uh, the advantage of the dedicated origin server is that we will guarantee you the bandwidth per server. Um, we manage the auto recovery, the redundancy, and the failover, so you don't have to bother with that. We will maintain for you. And we provide high availability uh, for this service. Then for the CDN, for the caching system, you could use Azure, or you can use a third party CDN. Uh, to connect a third party CDN, we have features like IP whitelist whitelisting, which means that from Azure media services, you could say, Okay, only this set of IP address can access my, my stream. Uh, and typically, that will be the IP address of the CDN. So you, by using this feature, you will make sure that the device or the customer will not connect directly to the origin server, but will always go through the CDN. So if you look at the full workflow, I mean, for a VOD, that's, it, we could say there, is, there are three, threat, three steps. Ingest, encoding, and, deliver, and streaming. Pricing and service level agreement, uh, it depends of the, of the option you, you choose. So you could start with a free trial, and you could encode for free up to uh, 100 gigabyte of content. Mm -hmm. uh, but you could also um, 
use the, sh the, the share pool. So when you, you have a subscription, which is not the free trial, you will pay per gigabyte of uh, encoding content. And if you reserve your unit, it will be the same price. Plus, you will pay for the booking of the encoder, which is uh, 73 euros per month. Uh, an interesting aspect, aspect is that we, we will build per day. So if you use, for example, one encoder for one day, you will not pay seven, 73 euros. You will pay uh, only a fraction of this, of this amount. So the billing is per day, and here is the price per, per month. Uh, for the SLA, for the service level agreement, uh, we have um, an availability SLA for the encoding mode, for share pool mode. Uh, but if you want to make sure that your asset is encoded as soon as you publish it, you have to use reserve unit. This way we can guarantee you uh, that we will be able to encode your content uh, as soon as you submit the job. Uh, that's the, that was for the encoding uh, price. For the streaming price, uh, uh, we have also the same option, share pool mode or reserve unit. Uh, so typically, uh, the price of the egress, of the output, is the same as the Azure CDN. That's the same. If you want a reserve unit, so one origin server just for you, you, we have, you the price is uh, 440, uh, 148 euros per month per origin unit. And one origin unit is, is in fact, several servers. We guarantee uh, redundancy for, for this service. Uh, and again, we will build per day. So if you use only for one day, we will, you will repair only for one day. So let's go back to to the portal uh, and see if the encoding has been, um, has been finished. So yes, it's finished. You see that the encoding task is at 100%. We have also the HLS task, which has been executed after the encoding. So if I go to my content tab, I see uh, a new, a new, two new assets. Um, I see the iOS, so the output intermediate PC Mac assets, which is, which is smooth streaming, and this one is the HLS version. So I have now two, two assets, and I can uh, publish it. So let's publish it, which means that it is now available on the internet. Um, and I need, now I, I see that I, I have a publish URL data here and I can copy this data. Uh, and this is my, my smooth streaming URL I can use in any smooth streaming player. Uh, so an example of player would be um, the health monitor. I don't know if you know this, if you know this player. This is a, a Silverlight smooth streaming player uh, which has been designed to test your stream so you could have a lot of statistics and data around the playback of the smooth streaming. And I insert my URL. So this is my URL. You see that I have the, num the name of my uh, account here, Azure Media Services account. I have a guide and I have my manifest here. And I could play the content. Let's play it. Okay. So this is what I shot with my Windows phone right yesterday. It is now encoded to adaptive bitrate, so I have several tracks, and the, the player will automatically adapt based on the quality of your network and the base of the screen that plays the, the content. Uh, you could also play directly from the, for the portal, so you see there is a play button. And here we use a player which is based on Flash, so look, yeah, it is a Flash player. And we develop a Flash uh, smooth, streaming, uh, smooth streaming plugin for Flash recently. Uh, so you could use the same stream for your Silverlight or for your Flash players. Uh, I will talk about this uh, player uh, tomorrow during a session on the client ecosystem for Azure Media Services. But you see you have several options. And, and because we have the HLS version here, 
Uh, so if you have an iPhone, uh, you could uh, connect to this URL here. Let's create one. Here it is. So you see. And this is an HLS stream. So we ask the, the server to, uh, this is an, an HLS stream, and if I open the, the file, uh, it will be a playlist for HLS. Uh, so this is going to, to work on, on iOS. So if you open this file on, on, on Safari on iOS, you will have an HLS stream coming from Azure and you will be able to play back the, the content. Okay, uh, so I show you what we call static packaging. We did the first encoding to smooth streaming and then we create a new version which is an HLA version. But we have two assets, right? Two output assets. So you pay for two assets, for the storage of two assets. So we added a new feature which is dynamic packaging. So let's look at the traditional encode. Uh, my video source, I encode it, I create, for example, uh, multi-bitrate MPEG-4 files, I package that to HLS and to smooth streaming and stream to the internet. So you see here I have three assets basically in the cloud. Uh, the, the encoding asset and, 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 and two format assets. Dynamic packaging is going to be a little different. I create the same assets, which is a multi-bitrate MPEG-4 uh, assets, but the origin server will transform for you on the fly when the client requests the stream, it will uh, create the stream for you. But you will store only one asset in the cloud. Uh, and so today we support three formats. We support HLS, Smooth Streaming, and Dash. And as soon as we have new format, we could implement that in our origin server without any cost for you in terms of storage. That's very interesting. So in order to use this feature, you need to activate the reserve unit. You need to have an origin server which is dedicated to you. So that's, an, that's, that's an, a step which is mandatory. Go to your scale tab and add a reserve unit, at least one reserve unit for the origin server. Uh, you could use the REST API, so I showed you the portal. You could use a REST API to develop your, your application and do the workflow. We also provide SDK. So we have one .NET SDK, um, and we provided the source code of this uh, SDK on GitHub. We have also a Java library um, for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Um, and we have on the internet, I think some people also created some PHP uh, library for Azure Media Services. So we are going now to develop an application and create a workflow in the cloud, but from an application developed on .NET SDK. So the demo I, I'm, I'm going to show you is, um, you could download it from the web. Uh, you will find the link in my presentation. And there is also an interesting reading from uh, Nick Drouin from the product team uh, around dynamic packaging and encoding and reserve units. So before developing the application, I'm going to explain to you what uh, I want to do. So the idea would be to use the um, media services SDK and the storage SDK to take a source assets uh, to get prior to upload the content, to get an authorization from the server, from the cloud, to create the asset in uh, the Azure Media Services database, to upload physically the file to, to the cloud through um, the SDK. Once I have my source asset in the cloud, I'm going to create a job to encode this asset, which is the a, MPEG, a single MPEG-4 file to a multi-bitrate MPEG-4 files. So this asset is going to be encoded by the encoder. Output is as a new asset, uh, which is a multi-bitrate MPEG-4 file. And then I will use Dynamic Packager. And in fact, it's uh, pretty simple. 
you just need to create a new URL. Um, and then what we call a locator. And the locator will have two forms. So if it's an origin locator, like this one, you see there is a guide. So you have the server name, the guide, and the file name and the type of content. Here I see that it's the smooth swimming asset. Uh, if I want to provide what we call a SAS locator, uh, it's a, a, a locator uh, to download one MPEG4 file, for, an, for example, directly from the blob storage. And you see there is a container here, which is my blob container, the file name of the file, and the share access signature. So the first one is going from the origin server in Azure Media Services. The second one uh, is not using origin server. It's just using um, the blob storage uh, download mode, right? So to create my dynamic packaging URL, I'm going to ask the origin server to uh, publish the content. I will get a URL. And by building, um, at the end of the URL, by building the format tag, I will be able to request an HLS stream or a smooth streaming stream or, or a dash stream. OK, so let's, uh, let's do the demo now. OK. So let's start uh, Visual Studio. I'm going to create. Uh, a new project, uh, which is um, a .NET or C Sharp um, application. Yes. Uh, I will create a console application here. And the first things to do is to uh, add the Azure Media Services SDK to the project. Um, so you could do the by going to tools, go to, to the new gate and search for Azure Media. And you see here the Windows Azure Media Services.NET SDK. And I can install from here, apply to the application. And it will create automatically, it will download the, the library and will reference these libraries in my application. You could also do it uh, from the command line. Okay, so now, if I go to the reference, you see that I have a reference to the Azure Storage library, to the Azure Media Services Client libraries, uh, to do my, uh, my application. So this is the main, uh, the main, uh, uh, function, so I'm going to add some code here, uh, which is the main code. So, so it, here it is. Uh, so the first things, let's perhaps increase the size. Okay. Okay. So the first uh, line of code is uh, create create the clone, the media context. Um, and I pass as a parameters my account name and my key. Then I will create an asset uh, with, the, with the function create asset of the file that we'll add later. Um, I will encode it to MPEG4, which is a, a function I'm going to develop. And I will get my uh, output asset and ask for the URL locator. So one for the SaaS version and one for the on-demand origin version. So this one will be, uh, for example, the, uh, uh, be able to, to create my HLS version, my Dash, and my smooth streaming version. So that's for the main part. So now I need to add some code. Um, so the first is the upload features. So I have a function here that creates the asset. Um, so you see that I'm taking my uh, local MPEG4 file, the Azure Video .mpeg4 file. I create it. Uh, I get the path. 
I ask the, I use the context object to create the asset in the cloud. Um, and then here, I'm doing an override to be able to get the progress status and I'm calling the upload method to asset to upload physically, I mean to upload the file to the cloud. I will, I will resolve that, okay. Then this is my function to do the uh, check of the status for the upload. So that's for the upload. Next, we need to add the code to create the encode, to launch the encoder. So this is my function to encode to MPEG-4. Um, it takes as a parameter the string, the input asset ID, which is a guide. And I'm going to get it from the cloud. So here I have a, a, a function to get the asset from the, from the string. I am specify which kind of encoding I want to do. So this is one of the profile. If you go to the web, you could find here all the task preset you can use. So we define what is CBR, CBR, VBR, and you find it here. You find all the, all the presets we support in Azure Media Encoder. So for example, this one is, uh, if you use this string, you will encode to H264 smooth streaming at 720p max. Um, we have another one for 1080p here. This one is not doing, is not going to encode to smooth streaming, it's going to encode to several bit rates, MPEG-4 bit, MP bit rates up to 1080p, for example. So that's all the profile we support and we are maintaining it and we are still working on new profile for new version of the encoder. So that's a, that's a profile. Then I will create the job. So a new job on the context object with the, um, I'm going to name encoding with the name of the asset. So here, this is the name of my new, new job here. Um, I'm getting the last Azure Media, serve, Azure Media Encoder with this uh, function. I create a new task, so a job can be a set of tasks. So now I have one job and I added, I'm adding one task, which is the encoding task. And as a par parameter, I pass the uh, media processor I got, which is the Azure Media Encoder, the preset, and some options. So I don't, I don't provide any option here. I had the input asset to the task, and I defined the name of the output asset. So the, the output asset, we have this name here. So I'm building an asset, a, a, a name here. Again, I define a job stage uh, change um, override, so I can check the status of my task. And here, that's the line of code that calling the, on, the job, right? So I'm going to submit my job here and then check the status of the, of the job here. I have a feature, I have a function just to check, to check the, the status and the last one which is um, writing to, to a file some data. So I'm in the mail, in the main here you see that I'm uh, I'm going to write to file here, for example, um, some, some content, okay? So I don't know if you are a developer, I'm sorry if you are not a developer, but you could, so, you could see that you can use the portal if you are not a developer to test the, the product. And if you are a developer, I mean, you can do a lot of things and you can define, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, of workflow uh, with that. Okay, so I think I have that. I need to add some code for the get URL. Okay, so, so this, is the, this is the function to get now the dynamic streaming URL. So basically I ask here uh, one year valid, validity for the, for the URL. So my stream will be available for one year. I could set any time if you want here or a few minutes if you want. Um, I'm going to uh, get the output asset of my job, create an access policy, 
which is the time uh, uh, of validity for my uh, locator. And then based on the type of um, locator I ask, uh, so this one is important for an Apple, I will ask the, the server to create a locator. So this is really what, this is the equivalent of the publish button I use in, on the portal. That's all. So this is an, all my code for the, uh, for the application. So let's run it now. It should work, I hope. So here my application is authentic, is going to authenticate against Azure Media Services. Then, okay, it just started the upload. So you'd see that I uploaded the file already. So it took a few seconds to upload the MP4 files. Now my application is building the job and will submit the job in a few seconds. Okay, so the job is scheduled, which means that it's not, it's not running yet. Oh, it's, no, it's running now, so it's, it's the state is processing. So the job has been, uh, is, uh, is processed. And I, I could uh, see it on the portal. If I go to job, I should be able to see the job also on my portal. Yes, it's, uh, it's encoding here, yeah, this one. Okay, so it's going to take, uh, I don't know, a few seconds to, to encode. And then we will get the, the output at a asset and the locator to be able to do dynamic packaging. So 1% here. Okay, we are waiting for the encoding, so I will show you the scale tab here. So we discussed about reserving uni units. So you could here res reserve on-demand streaming. So I need one here to be able to use dynamic packaging, but I can ask up to five units. So you see that we guarantee 200 megabit per second per unit output. And then the encoding, it's the same, but you can go up to 25 encoders. So 25 tasks at the same time that could be managed by Azure Media Services for your account. If you need more, you can ask. There is a URL here, and you can ask for more um, units. But there is some limitation in the interface to, have, to avoid any incident, I would say. Um, that's for the scale. We have also this uh, link resources tab, which show you uh, which component I will say third party component or first party component you are, you subscribe it. So I'm accessing from my, my Azure Media Services account, my storage account here. Uh, I'm using the Windows Azure Media encoder and I'm using the Azure Media on demand server. Uh, as soon as we have third party, you will see more, um, uh, more choice here. And for the developers, we provide sample code here. So you see that, for example, okay, I want some Java code to upload the video. And I have, okay, the first step is to install the, SD, the Java SDK. And this is the code to copy, to use, you can use directly. That already integrates um, my authentication, my, my keys here. So this is the Java code to do the the upload. Okay, so the encoding has been done, and you see here that I got my URL. So I have one MPEG4 URL, which is the SAS locator, so it's using my blob storage. And I have three locator, uh, which, is, which is the dynamic packaging. And if you look at the locator, let's let, let look at the, at the file here that has been generated. Um, I can probably show you. You see that the smooth streaming URL here is the same that 
the HLS URL is exactly the same, and the same for Dash. So I just ask here the server to respond with a manifest, which is a smooth streaming manifest. And here I ask the server to generate an HLS version of the stream, of the same stream. And the same for Dash. This is my Dash request. So one file, one asset, one MPEG4 file, multi-bitrate MPEG4 file, or smooth streaming uh, file, assets, and three different outputs. And so here the server, my origin server, is going to, to, to transform on the fly in my content. Um, so let's try. So I can take my URL here. Let's uh, go back to the smooth streaming player. Copy the new URL and play the smooth streaming version. That's for um, smooth streaming. We have Dash, so let's try also to play with Dash. So that's a beta version of Dash output. Um, so if I copy my Dash URL here, and I have a Dash player on Windows 8. I copy my manifest and load it in Dash. Um, okay, so let's go to the, let's see the Dash. No, oh, sorry. If I go to the Dash version here, where is my Dash? Let's copy again. This is the new Dash manifest uh, for the one who know Dash format. Uh, what we call the MPD. So it's, it's close to smooth streaming manifest, um, but that's uh, based on the MPEG standard, which has been uh, finalized at the beginning of this year. So you find that um, this is the manifest that defines the, the bitrate for the video, and you see that have, I have also uh, some information for the audio. So I have here one uh, set of uh, information for the audio uh, here. Uh, so this could be played by any Dash compatible players. We are using here MPEG-4, uh, what we call CSF for the format. Uh, and we expect to see more and more devices supporting Dash in the coming months. Uh, but you, we have some implementation from TV, TV manufacturers today. Um, Dash is used by HBB TV, which is a, a standard in Europe to interactivity on connected TV. And so you could use Dash to stream to these TVs, basically. And then we have the HLS version, which you could use on any iOS or even uh, on Android for Android phone. So if you know to want to know more about uh, players, uh, I will do a session tomorrow at uh, 10 a.m. on um, on the client ecosystem, the HLS player, the smooth streaming player, and so on. So to conclude, and then we will have some time for questions, um, I expect that you saw that uh, we provide a quite flexible solution with Azure Media Services. It could be very easy to use because we have a portal with a UI, so you could start without in, any development skill. But you could use any kind of development language if you want to, to do more. Uh, uh, you can. Our goal is really to make the technology so you could reach any kind of devices. So we are committed to support the protocols that are today used on the, inter on the internet and on the market. Uh, we are working with partners, and we want partners to do either build-in component or to do build-on development, which means that using the API to do the, the full solution. 
and resell the solutions to, to customers. Um, we support content protection and authentication, uh, and we try to bring technology in devices so we could protect the content, that's key. And we know that, especially for enterprise market, for example, you need to protect the content um, uh, if you stream uh, from, from the cloud. Um, we are also working on making the advertising workflow better and work across, across all clients, uh, which means that if you insert an advertising, right, you want it to, to be played on Windows 8, Windows Phone, uh, iOS, Android. You need a, a, good, a good experience, a common experience on all the devices. So we are, we are providing source code for players for, for this reason. Uh, the cloud here provides a new business model. You pay for what you use. So uh, we try to make the price very easy to understand. But you see that you will pay only if you use the platform, right? You, you pay if you own code. You pay if you stream. But if you don't do anything with the platform, basically you will, you will not pay. Or you pay for perhaps for the storage of your current assets. That's very interesting because you could start small. You could prototype. Uh, and then uh, if the customer is happy with the prototype, you could uh, create the, 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 full, the, full, the real services with the same architecture that you, you were using for the prototype. Um, and so that's uh, the, the goal, right, is to be able to deliver to this uh, uh, from the cloud to any kind of device. Um, it's a very uh, interesting market with uh, new devices coming every, every month, I would say, especially in the, in the mobile phone market. Uh, we think that the cloud is really interesting for that we, because we will manage for you the format. You will, you will not have to take care of the latest, you know, HLS or... Um, uh, dash format, you put your content in the cloud and you let uh, Azure Media Services transforming it for you and delivering to your, to your devices. Um, some resources, of course, if you want to know more, uh, we have a full MSDN uh, documentation on MSDN about Azure Media Services. Um, so if you want details, uh, don't hesitate to search for Azure Media Services. We have also a forum um, to exchange with the customers on Azure Media Services. And I will take questions if there are questions, but uh, if you want to evaluate the session, here are the, the code to use from the application. Um, so thanks a lot. And do you have any questions to, on Azure Media Services? And do, don't hesitate. Uh, I'm here to, to answer the questions. Yes, question. OK, so question is, uh, what, shall, what are the format that are supported for the encoding, for, for the source file uh, before encoding? Um, so we published the list of format we support on, on the internet for Azure Media Encoder. Of course, for third party encoder, that could be different. Uh, but basically, we support, so, uh, Various containers like AVI, Windows Media, MPEG4, MPEG TS. In terms of codec, we support, uh, as an input, we support MPEG2, MPEG1, uh, VC1, H264. Um, in terms of audio, I think we support uncompressed Windows Media Audio, AAC. Um, um, and uh, yeah, I think that I don't miss any, any formats. Um, Third party will be able to provide new, for, new format, new support, and we will also improve our encoder with new format uh, uh, later. Yes. Any other questions? Formats? Um, DRM, qu question about DRM or? Authentication or yes? Question. Yes, you're right. So, the question is, uh, I you see a, a limitation of 200 megabytes on on the upload side. That's only a limitation for the UI. 
So if you use the SDK or the API, you don't have any limitations. But we did put these limitations because we go through the portal when you do the upload, so we didn't want to saturate the portal. Uh, so that's just for the UI, uh, the portal UI, I would say, which is not designed to be used by customer. It's just for you to discover the service and to understand the concepts. So that's why we put these limitations, yes. Yes, question. For UDP? So the question is, um, for UDP, uh, I, I presented the, the solution from Aspera. Is, it, is there a solution for a .NET solution for UDP? So the answer is no. I think we, we don't have today a UDP a version. Uh, we cannot upload with UDP with a .NET SDK today, that, to my knowledge. So if you use uh, the Azure Media Services SDK or the Blob Storage SDK, you will do HTTP or HTTPS, which is TCP. So Aspera is doing UDP, but um, because we use Azure Storage, you could develop yourself or find a tool that's using UDP, and as soon as you are able to upload to a blob storage, we can use this asset in Azure Media Services. So there, is, there are perhaps some solutions from third-party solutions that can upload content to, a, to Azure Blob Storage. Uh, for example, like using CloudBerry uh, Explorer, so you could use that, I think it's not using UDP, but you could use this tool to do a drag and drop for your, for your file to the blob storage, and then use the API of Azure Media Services to create virtually the assets and say, my assets, the files are, are here. They are in my blob storage. So because we use the Azure blob storage, it's pretty flexible, right? You can develop also, uh, why not, we, we have some solution to do blob to blob copy, right? So you could also do blob to blob copy from one data center to another data center. Uh, and, and use it in, uh, use the file in Azure Media Services. Okay. Any more question before closing the, the session? No? Okay, so thanks a lot for attending the presentation and Perhaps see you tomorrow for the next, next step, which is the client uh, presentation. Thanks a lot, and have a good, uh, good decade. <laughs>